Sheet pan meals are one of those indispensable paths you take when wanting to hit life's easy button. Therefore, simplicity has been the constant solution for me when feeling just immersed in life. Just know you're not alone. We all get overwhelmed. There's so much to pay attention to. There's so much going on and things to be aware of. And success isn't clear until learning how to rest when you're tired. And while a sheet pan meal is a shortcut, there's no sacrifice. As your meal is still healthy, packed with flavor, nutrients, and still very attractive. Quite literally the epitome of working smarter and not harder. Teriyaki meals are meals you wanna learn how to cook, but also you wanna incorporate it into your meals every so often, as it's a very popular takeout option. The reason that is important is because if you can make takeout meals at home, it then becomes a deterrent to waste your hard-earned money on what you could simply make healthier and cheaper at the house. There's also a bit of zen there as you feel like you've ordered takeout, so you have that feeling to stick with, but along with the fact that you saved money, there's a win-win all over. This meal calls for super firm tofu as your protein source. You could also use seitan if maybe you're not into tofu, and that's gonna give you that similar texture you're looking for. And if neither of those float your boat, chickpeas, if you're still looking to keep it as a high protein option, you can, you know, substitute that as well. And chickpeas would give you that, you know, minimal adjustment in the recipe because the only difference would be you wouldn't use the cornstarch that you use to coat the tofu because that's supposed to help with getting the tofu crispier and chickpeas on their own, you know, tend to crisp up in the oven. So that's your only adjustment. Broccoli and sugar snap peas are also incorporated into this dish as each of those have a good amount of protein in them. And personally, I like eating my greens that way rather than to have a salad. I still eat salads, so no offense to the, you know, salads out there. Traditional teriyaki sauce, I believe calls for mirin. And as a home cook, I'm, I'm just not gonna use that very often. So we're gonna work around that to get the same bold, tangy, and sweet flavors you get from a teriyaki sauce you taste in a restaurant. This recipe calls for brown sugar as the molasses gives that deep flavor that you get, or that I'm used to, I should say, when tasting teriyaki sauce. But I ended up using maple syrup rather than brown sugar as that's gonna help me dodge the refined sugar. And I actually think it tastes better like an elevated version of teriyaki sauce. Yes, I even make swaps to my own recipe when I create them because I honestly run out of ingredients and like to challenge myself in trying to find similar ways of coming up with the same dish. But I also think it's helpful for you guys to understand you know, how and why I make my swaps. This way you can do it too. I use rice wine vinegar in this recipe. You could swap that for apple cider vinegar, but if you actually like this kind of cuisine, then go ahead and purchase that rice wine vinegar because it makes a difference in the tang when it comes to you know these kind of recipes. I also use fresh ginger, but prefer ground in this dish. Ground and or you know just dried spices in general are more potent than the fresh stuff. So for example, I had to use a full teaspoon of fresh ginger to come close to the quarter teaspoon I would typically use of ground ginger. I also added red pepper flakes, which isn't traditional, but I like spice, so omit if you need to. As I said before, we're home cooks, so if you decided to purchase a, you know, bottle of teriyaki sauce to save yourself a few minutes and just wanted to dump it all over this when it was done, you know, I wouldn't judge you.
Soy curls, I feel like, just do not get enough recognition. It's like, if you're struggling with the texture of tofu, or you know, maybe you're beginning your plant-based journey, or maybe you do Meatless Mondays and you're just looking for something else to try out. Soy curls have a very similar texture to, you know, meat alternatives or, you know, meat for that matter. So it's a good choice if you're just easing into being plant-based. It will probably make you feel the most, you know, at home when it comes to, you know, something that you're used to. The kids love it because it kind of reminds them of like, you know, chicken fingers or chicken nuggets. And also it's literally just one ingredient. Unlike the instruction manual that you're reading when you look at an ingredient list on, you know, possibly a meat alternative. And that's not a knock on meat alternatives. You know, I'm grateful that those are available to folks, but if you want something that's one ingredient and kind of can get you that same feel, you know, soy curls are it. This sheet pan meal is actually a skillet meal on my website that I turned into a sheet pan deal. You may have seen me make something similar before with cauliflower, which is great if you're looking for something with no soy or something like low carb. Here, we're trying to use just an array of colorful bell peppers, which forces me to use about half of each of the bell peppers. Therefore, I don't crowd the pan or, you know, throw off the ratio from bell peppers to soy curls. So the rest of those bell peppers are great because they're already chopped and I could use those in tofu scrambles, um, salads, or even some like, you know, cold veggie wraps. We're creating a version of taco season. It doesn't take long and it's great because you're capable of controlling and therefore enhancing the flavors that you love most within that seasoning. This way you can indulge in with your tacos. Fajitas. For example, sometimes in a pre-made blend, for me, the cumin is overpowering and can seem more like a, you know, a curry blend for seasoning rather than a taco blend. Have you ever tried Trader Joe's taco seasoning? It doesn't seem to always be consistent, at least for me, and it is sometimes extremely fiery. I actually still have a few packages that I'm, you know, slowly trying to get through. I forgot to mention it, although you saw me do it, soy curls, you hydrate them and then you can drain them a bit by, you know, squeezing out whatever's excess. In this recipe, I designed it that you hydrate them with just enough that the draining process, you know, isn't necessary. I chose to have my fajitas on lettuce wraps. I know traditionally you would do that on tortillas. Quick tip, if you decide to go the tortilla route, don't forget to wrap it in foil and stick it in the oven for the last few minutes of cooking. This way you can really warm those things up and it is phenomenal to enjoy. Full recipe for each are linked in the description and there you could also locate the nutrition facts. Check out my last video if you're looking for, you know, just some ideas on how to squeeze zucchini into the menu. I appreciate you. Until next time, believe in good. Peace.